Welcome, everybody. Public reading of scripture, a practice that has been forgotten in the modern church, where we take the word of God, open it up, read it out loud, and people listen. We are going to be reading Acts 24 and 25. What is your name? My name is Amir Tsarfati, and uh, we are in Nashville, Tennessee, getting ready for the Awaiting His Return Bible Prophecy Conference to be held this Saturday at the Bethel uh, Beth Outreach, Center, yeah. Outreach Center here in Nashville. Yeah, big church, a lot of people registered. It basically is sold out. Um, we are excited because the Word of God is everything in these days. That's why we do this every week. Public readings of scripture. Amir, will you please lead us in prayer yes. that the Lord would speak to us yes. all? Lord, we thank you so much for your word. Your word is true. You magnify your word above your name. We thank you, Father, that we can come boldly before you, not just by prayer and supplication, not, not just by your presence in the form of the Holy Spirit, but also by knowing your word, your written word, by holding it in our hands, by reading from it, and by being nourished by it. We thank you, Father. We thank you that we have the Holy Spirit to interpret it for us, to, um, to give us the comfort, the truth, uh, and, of course, the, uh, the right way to divide it later on to other people. So now we ask that you will be with us as we look into your word, as we read it out loud, as we do it publicly, as thousands will watch it. We ask that you will speak to every, each and every individual that is listening to these words. Everything in your word is powerful. Everything in your, in your word uh, can, can actually reveal more about you and comfort and encourage people, and yet also convict thank you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just as a reminder, we do use the New King James Version. It's our go-to version. It works great. It's a great translation and it keeps us all on the same page. Uh, two chapters on this episode, yes. Acts chapter 24 and Acts chapter 25. I'll take 24. Amir will take 25. Yeah. Sit back with your family or if you're alone and listen to what the Word of God says. Now, remember, Paul is going through the action of all of the missionary journeys, and it's not going, uh, shall we say, as smoothly as a comfort-oriented human being would like. Now, after five days, Ananias the high priest came down with the elders and a certain orator named Tertullus. These gave evidence to the governor against Paul. And when he was called upon, Tertullus began his accusation, saying, Seeing that through you we enjoy great peace and prosperity is being brought to this nation by your foresight, we accept it always in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Nevertheless, not to be tedious to you and any further, I beg you to hear by your courtesy a few words from us. For we have found this man a plague, hmm. a creator of dissension among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Hmm. He even tried to profane the temple, and we seized him and wanted to judge him according to our law. But the commander, Lysias, came by and with great violence took him out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come to you. By examining him yourself, you may ascertain all these things of which we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, maintaining that these things were so. Oh, doesn't this injustice? Okay. Then Paul, after the governor had nodded to him to speak, answered, Watch this. Inasmuch as I know that you have been for many years a judge of this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. Because you may ascertain that it is no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. 
and they neither found me in the temple disputing with anyone nor inciting the crowd, either in the synagogues or in the city. Nor can they prove the things of which they now accuse me. But this I confess mm, you. to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. This being so, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and men. Now, after many years, I came to bring alms and offerings to my nation, and in the midst of which some Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with a mob nor with tumult. They ought to have been here before you to object if they had anything against me. Or else let those who are here themselves say, if they found any wrongdoing in me, well, I stood before the council, unless it is for this one statement which I cried out, standing among them concerning the resurrection of the dead. And I am being judged by you this day. But when Felix heard these things, having more accurate knowledge of the way, he adjourned the proceedings and said, when Lysias, the commander, comes down, I will make a decision on your case. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and let him have liberty and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for or visit him. After some days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now, as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call you. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given him by Paul that he might release him. Therefore, he sent for him and more often and conversed with him. But after two years, Porcius Festus succeeded Felix, and Felix, wanting to do the Jews a favor, left Paul bound. Amazing. Chapter 20, chapter 25. Now, when Festus had come to the province, after three days he went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief men of the Jews informed him against Paul, and they petitioned him, asking a favor against him, that he would summon him to Jerusalem while they lay in ambush along the road to kill him. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea, and that he himself was going there shortly. Therefore, he said, let those who have authority among you go down with me and accuse this man to see if there is any fault in him. And when he had remained among them more than 10 days, he went down to Caesarea and the next day sitting on the judgment seat, he commanded Paul to be brought. And when he, had come, when he had come, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood about and laid many serious complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar, have I offended in anything at all. But Festus, wanting to do the Jews a favor, answered Paul and said, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and there be judged before, before me concerning these things? So Paul said, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be judged. To the Jews I have done no wrong, as you very well know. For if I am an offender or have committed anything deserving of death, I do not object to dying, 
But if there is nothing in these things of which these men accuse me, no one can deliver me to them. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, You have appealed to Caesar? To Caesar you shall go. Hmm. And after some days, King Agrippa and Bernice came to Caesarea to greet Festus. And when they had been when they had been there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a certain man left a prisoner by Felix, about whom the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me. And when I was in Jerusalem asking for a judgment against him to take them, uh, excuse me, to them I answered, it is not the custom of the Romans to deliver any to the destruction before the accused meets the accuser face to face and has opportunity to answer for himself concerning the charge against him. Therefore, when they had come together without any delay, the next day I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought in. When the accusers stood up, they brought no accusation against him of such thing as I supposed, but had some questions against him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I was uncertain of such questions. I asked whether he was willing to go to Jerusalem and there be judged concerning these things. But when Paul appealed to be reserved for the decision of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I also would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you shall hear him. So the next day, when Agrippa and Bernice had come with great pomp and had entered the auditorium with the commanders and the prominent men of the city, at Festus's command, Paul was brought in. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all the men who are here present with us, you see this man about whom the whole assembly of the Jews petition me, but at Jerusalem and here, crying out, both in Jerusalem and here, crying out that he was not fit to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing deserving of death and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I decided to send him. I have nothing certain to write to my Lord concerning him, Therefore, I have brought him out before you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after the examination has taken place, I may have something to write. For it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not to specify the charges against him. Lot of drama. And I, can I say something, Mike? Yeah. So you, we must remember the book of Acts and, in fact, the whole gospel into the book of Acts and the epistles. These are a, gr a group of people that have been persecuted. Mm -hmm. Neither one of them was living in the Garden of Roses. They suffered persecution. They suffered um, uh, natural disasters as well, some other accidents. Um, and hatred for many people. This is something we need to be ready to suffer from. I mean, uh, the, the end times will not be, uh, we, we live in the end times. This is not going to be a, a, a stroll in the park, Mike. Yeah, even as we approach the end times before the tribulation, we can count on this direction exactly. for the church international. In fact, it's already I, happening. Yes, yes. In fact, a lot of Christians, um, you know, in the prophecy community, they accuse the pre-tribulation rapture believers of escapism because um, they are not willing to go through some rough times. So I'm saying, okay, I believe in pre-tribulation rapture. Mm. 
But I do believe that until Jesus will take us, and I believe it will be before the tribulation, I believe we're not going to be here to see yeah, the Antichrist. I believe we're not going to be here to see yeah. the third temple. Yeah. Yet I believe until then, whether it's tomorrow or in five years, things will not get better for the believers. Yeah. They'll get worse. Yeah. Things are in, getting worse. In America, around the world, in Europe, all over the world, Christians are ought to be persecuted. They will have false accusations against them. They will have mocking. And look, somebody wrote me today. So that, this is really entry absolutely. level. Absolutely. This is entry level compared <laughs> no, to. We're, we're, <laughs> somebody wrote me today that the, um, the uh, what's the name of the Christian university um, um, down there um, where... Our friend Ed Heinsen was the um, the dean. Uh, Liberty, Liberty. University. So the Liberty yeah. University, their sport team is about. I believe it's either football or baseball. They're about to play against another team. Okay. And the other team declared the day of that game as the LGBTQ Pride Day. Now it's not an official day, but they made it a day so they can raise that LGBTQ flag during that game because these Liberty University uh, students are homophobic. So we're going to value know, cast. Exactly. Value. Try to correct the record by value okay. cast. It's not even during this whole pride month or something, but what I'm trying to say is that more and more and more, we're going to see the clash of of mindset, of spirits, of, of understanding of how the world is, and it's going to get, now it's friendly, it's like a game, it's a sport event, it's going to get uglier, Mike, and again, at the right time, at the appointed time, Christ will come and take us, don't get me wrong, but until then, we ought to occupy, we ought to be about the Father's business, and we ought to remember and prepare ourselves, yeah, that things will get worse. Yep. What I like about this passage, these passages we've been reading, is that Paul doesn't just mm. become a carpet to mm. walk on. Mm. He actually <laughs> states the facts, and you'll see next week when we come back, yeah. he is going to plead his case. Remember, the tribulation is designed primarily for the Jews to bring them back to the Lord mm. or to bring them to the Lord and the world, whoever is left there that hasn't been raptured. If we are, as a church, already the Lord's, why would he want us to go through the tribulation yeah. to bring us back to where we already are? But, it's it's counterintuitive. Yeah. That's not to say that we won't suffer. We no. were promised persecution yeah. from day one, and this is proof of it that we had for this My public reading. First of century and Christians were already, already. already accused to be a plague. Think about that it. word, plague. You plague. saw that, yeah. Christians are accused to be a plague. Christians, are, you're a disease. <laughs> oh, yeah. they might, they, they, they're going to say that again, yeah, yeah. and we're going to be shocked. How can you call us a disease? Well, they call Paul and all of his people a disease, a yeah. plague already in the first century. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. I'm not trying to scare anyone because actually, if we're ready, if we know that it's going to happen, if, if, if people only told everyone that things will get worse, but... We have to stand on the word of God, the promise of God, and be filled with the spirit of God that gives us the boldness and the stability and the understanding of the word and the power, the power of his resurrection. Yeah. Look, what was it that they found him talking about? Yeah, the, the resurrection. resurrection. This is the main thing. You can talk about Jesus's death as long as you want, but Muhammad is dead, Buddha is dead. Jesus is alive. The resurrection is the game changer. And that is what 1 Corinthians 15 is all about. So I'm saying, what an amazing two chapters. I'm looking forward to, you know, yep, we'll close up. We'll close yes. it off. We're going to do a marathon yeah. all the way to chapter 28 next week. I hope this encourages you, my friends, because the story of the apostles and all of the persecutions they went through opened up opportunities to share. We already see that he's got he's getting the message to the governors. You're going to see that he's going to share his testimony next Look, week. He, he's going to end up in Rome. And I don't Paul, want to reveal all no, the stuff. Pa I'm going Paul to is not. Of, Paul yeah. is not. He's not uh, a, a Episcopalian. He is not Catholic. He is not Orthodox. He, the only way to describe Paul and his people in the first century 
is not even saying Christians necessarily, because nobody understood then what it's all about. The way. The way. He is of the way. Paul tried to explain to them the way, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way, no other truth. He is the way. And I'm, you know, sometimes I wish that Christianity would be called the way and we get rid of all of the other the titles and, and all yes of the yes the way because there's no other way the way he is of the way he belongs to the way yeah you know i said i'm this is behold israel but if 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 i had to go back and i was not israeli and israel was not the main focus of my ministry and i had to think of any other name it would be the way yeah i mean it, it's yeah describes, it's there it it's perfectly. so amazing so listen Stand firm, do not be moved, hold on to the teachings, to the tradition, to the teaching, to the doctrines, know the word of God, read the word of God, and stay in the way, and believe in the way, the truth, and the life. Things are going to get rough, but he promised, he said, be of good cheer, don't get depressed, oppressed, suppressed, don't get, he says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome this world. Well, perfect place Beautiful. to end. Lord, bless every viewer now. Yes. Give us the courage of Paul and the original mm. disciples, especially as we enter into yes. a deeper level of the Hallelujah. end times. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Next week, we'll close off the book. Until then, pray for us this weekend. The date is the 26th of September, and we go into, two days from now, the Nashville Conference. Yes. Thank you. God Thank bless you. you, and shalom from Nashville.